Stop right there, pest. Oh, don't bother trying to skitter away. Small as you are, you can't escape my notice. Oh? I have to say, I wasn't expecting that to be your first question. Yes, I can talk, in a way. My mind is reaching out to yours. I suppose you could call it telepathy, if you had to give it name with your primitive tongue. Are you going to start screaming again? Oh, please don't. My ears are still raw from all the racket you little things made last night when I arrived. What am I? Who am I, you mean? I am Morgara, and there is only one of me. Oh, human, I've had a long night. Stop shouting at me, would you? Excuse me. I don't need to explain myself, pest. You tiny things should explain yourselves. Now hold still. Ah, not so loud now, are you? Not now that you're in the palm of my hand. Don't look down. You're quite a ways up. Have you any idea how long I waited to come home? How long I hibernated deep in the ocean, far from here, dreaming of the day I could finally emerge and return? And then, after I woke, I came such a long way back to my territory, only to find it overgrown with these giant stone hives of yours. Then you started throwing all your quaint little fires at me, which I can't hold against you, of course. It's only natural to defend one's territory. But this was my domain first, back when your kind still cowered in my shadow. I simply took it back. My, my, you little pests have certainly grown bold in my absence, haven't you? I will say I'm impressed to see how far you've spread across the world. But from the way you seem to flaunt your success... <laughs> from the way you thought you could berate me for simply reclaiming my home. You seem to think this planet belongs to you. Oh, you have come a long way from what I remember, human, I'll give you that. Your kind used to huddle away at night, dreading the dark and everything that lived in it. You used to whisper my name with terror and reverence, Hiding in my domain so I might protect you from lesser predators. But as I showed you last night, no, you are not on top. Your friends? Aha, the other humans. Well, I can't make any promises. There were so many of you, and you're so small. And so many of these stone hives of yours stood all around me. Fire came at me from every direction. However, I only tried to fight my attackers off. As long as they didn't get in my way, I let the others escape. I'm not heartless, human. If your kind shows no further aggression toward me, I will show none in return. We had our dispute. I won. That should be the end of it. Oh, human, I know your kind has become accustomed to getting their way. But this is my home. I will defend it from anything that tries to take it from me. Oh, so many questions. Shouldn't you be groveling, or... Paralyzed with fear, or something along those lines. 
You want to know more about me? <laughs> what for? Really? You've never seen anything like me. I am the only Morgara, but there are others similar to me. Oh, surely a few of them are still about. No. Hmm. <laughs> I should be what, Pest? Choose your words carefully. Physically and biologically impossible? Well, what does that even mean? You humans are everywhere now. Do you honestly know nothing about us? Hmm. Strange. How could we have all disappeared? All right, human. I'll allow your questions. But only because I have questions of my own for you to answer. That seems a fair exchange. No, the ocean isn't my domain. I didn't want to go so far away. But there was someone I needed to deal with. If left alone, she would have destroyed my territory. And much more. She could have destroyed everything. Yes, she was a rival, you could say. She was a bit like you humans, really. Not content to have her own territory. Expansionist. She wanted to spread and control everything. To flaunt her dominance and let no one else challenge her. Yes, I hunted her. I hunted her across the world until we finally met in the ocean. There, I struck her down once and for all. But it was a difficult battle. I was badly injured. Too much, in fact, to even crawl home. I found a crevice to hide in and fell into a deep, restorative sleep. Hmm? What woke me? <laughs> Something moved past my tomb. I felt it more than anything. A strange energy came from it, sizzling across my skin. It didn't just wake me. It invigorated me, agitated me. When I opened my eyes, I saw this long, tube-shaped thing. It moved past my cave's opening. I was so hungry. So irritated by the sensation, I attacked it and devoured as much of it as I could. You have some inkling what this strange thing was? Really? What was it? A nuclear submarine? <laughs> How did you hear about this nuclear submarine going missing? This was the other side of the world, at the bottom of the sea. On the intranet. Hmm. Should that phrase mean something to me? Oh... So it's a way for all of you to communicate, even if you live a great distance from each other. Hmm. But how? Your tiny little brains can't possibly communicate telepathically at that distance. If you're trying to show me whatever you just grabbed, it's much too small for me to see. <laughs> can't you just tell me? Ah. Uh, so, information travels through these threads. How? Do you speak into them? Put something else into them? Think into them, perhaps? Ah, uh, all right, whatever you say. I can't follow this. It's much too uh, primitive. 
Hmm. I suppose that's true. If you can talk to each other from anywhere, you could tell each other about me. Perhaps even coordinate a counterattack. But how does that help you, exactly? Your fires did little more than irritate me last night. Oh, you have bigger ones. I have more weapons as well. You're not in a position to threaten me, my little pest. Oh, you're simply... warning me? <laughs> hmm. Thank you, I suppose. I can't imagine why you would warn me, though. You had an advantage over me. An element of surprise. Now you've thrown it away. Tell me, why would you do that, hmm? Because I can think of only one reason why you would. This is a trick. What are you up to? Why would you not want me to get hurt, hmm? You humans have become very competitive since last I saw you. I must surely be one of the greater challenges to your dominance in a while. It's natural to compete. Nature isn't always a lush garden with room for everyone. Sometimes it's an arena. And right now, little one, you and I are not on the same side. Hmm. I don't seem evil. <laughs> what does that mean? Yes, my rival overstepped. She wanted the world for herself. To take everything with nothing left for anyone else. So you think that was evil of her because it would make everyone else suffer for no justifiable reason? I suppose that makes a kind of sense. So, you think when I came to retake my territory it wasn't evil? Ah, because I was doing it for a reason, and only struck back in self-defense. Well, by your logic, aren't you humans evil as well? You've spread so far and changed the world so drastically. I can smell your fires and your waste from anywhere. There used to be verdant forests and rivers here, but now they're all gone, and all the life they supported with them. Did you need to wipe them all out for yourselves? You seemed capable of coexisting peacefully before. Oh, I'm not accusing you personally of anything, little one. I simply think you're overthinking this. In my view, you weren't exactly wrong to remove the forests and rivers to suit yourselves. After all, they supported predators which could kill you. <laughs> you are awfully fragile. They were, in a way, competing with you. Yes, it might have been... Excessive. It might have been evil, even. But I can see the logic behind it. It isn't all logic. Sometimes it's feelings. Well, I suppose. But we do what we have to do to survive, don't we? But yes, I suppose feelings sometimes figure into it. Why do you not want to hurt me? None of your friends live near the waterfront. So that means they'd be safe. I wouldn't have hurt them, correct? I don't see what difference that makes. It seems you should have had some camaraderie for your fellow humans, even if you didn't know them personally, but, uh... You're welcome, I suppose. No, I won't hurt you now. Why would I? What can you do to me? Ah, oh, 
Why would I eat humans? You're so small. I could have a whole village and still be hungry. Yet your size also makes you difficult to catch. I'd spend more energy than I'd gain. Why do you ask? Oh, you just wanted to see if you were a tasty little morsel. Well, I'm glad to have set your mind at ease. No, you may not leave. That's correct. I did say I wouldn't hurt you. But I also said that I have questions. Where are the rest of my kind? If you didn't even know we existed, what could have happened to them? They might have gone into hibernation. Some of them did battle with that rival of mine, didn't fare so well. But surely not all of them. What about the rest? Yes, I suppose you're right. How would you know any of that? A human lifespan is almost as short as you are. <laughs> ah. How about this, then? Hmm? You help me discover what happened to my kin, and I'll tell you everything about the old world. Deal? Uh, more of your weapons. We'd better get somewhere safe, uh, for your sake. Where are we going? Well, to my lair, of course. It's underground, where they won't be able to reach us. Of course I'm going to the water. <laughs> The entrance is hidden in the bay. Now, you aren't going to like this, but keep in mind what I said about not hurting you. In order to get you there safely, you'll have to ride in my mouth. Oh, don't look so mortified. If I wanted to eat you, I would have scarfed you down by now. You have nothing to fear from me. How many times have I said I wouldn't harm you? Besides, I used to... Uh... Hmm? What? Oh, no, it's nothing. I've done this before, is what I'm saying. It's safe. Are you ready, little one? Well, close your eyes, then. That might help. Now, hold on. There, you see? You made it unharmed, didn't you? Just as I promised you would. I had no other way of getting you here. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, what an interesting little phrase. I must have plucked it from your mind. Why did humans build above my lair? Well, I was about to wonder the same thing. We are far underground, but my lair is not small. You really had no idea it was under your, uh, nesting site? Oh, I'm sorry. Your city. Hmm. Cover your ears. I must announce my return. Well, where are they? Oh, the humans I once protected. Some of them made their homes here in my caves. The closer they were to me, the safer they thought they'd be, I suppose. 
When I return to them, they light fires along those stalagmites there so that I might know where they are and safely move around them. But I see no fires. Perhaps I've been gone so long they abandoned the tradition. Well, may as well try again. Hmm. I think something is wrong. No, it cannot wait. Something smells... different. Well, normally I could smell the smoke of their fires. Meat they might be cooking. The moss they harvest from the rocks. I smell many things coming from them. But all I sense now is the moss. I don't hear voices or their music, or any sounds of their toil. I don't see their lights or the smoke of their fires. Worried? Now why would I be worried? I didn't need them for anything. They were simply... Here, I became accustomed to them. Look, their nests were among the stalagmites here. It was safer for them than on the ground. Oh, quickly, look inside. Yes, hop off my hand and take a look around. There were thousands of them when I left. They can't all be gone. Well, so, so they are gone. Well, <clears throat> that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> they were here so I could protect them. Obviously, they'd have no reason to stay without me. They must have just moved somewhere else, perhaps back to the surface. I assume they had a way to get back up. I didn't carry them down here as I did you. Right, right, of course, that must be it. They simply left when I did. It's strange, though, seeing their nests overgrown with moss, not smelling their fires or hearing their voices. Oh, you're going to insist, I admit it, aren't you? Yes, I did like having them here. I didn't need them, but they were company. Pets. Sometimes they would sing, and it was a sweet sound, echoing softly in the caverns. On my lazier days, I enjoyed watching them bustle about. On rare occasions, one would come to me, and I would commune with them as I do with you now. They would tell me the state of things, seek my advice, or sometimes we would simply converse. I will miss them. Oh, please, human, I already told you I wasn't heartless. You seem to enjoy throwing the word monster around without knowing what it truly means. I am another creature of this world, like yourself, if a bit <laughs> larger. I don't bear your kind any ill will, so long as you don't make trouble for me. What are you... Oh. When I faltered above, why? <laughs> well, that isn't any business of yours, pest. Now... Back to the matter at hand. You are curious about me, and I am curious about what's happened to the rest of my kin. Here, get back in my hand. We're going to my den. Hmm? Hmm. I'm not sure what those clouds of light are. 
I just know they hover from the moss on the walls and provide illumination to see by. Every so often those bats will fly through them. Uh, keep your head down, by the way. The bats sometimes attacked my humans, but I suppose that's an occupational hazard of keeping humans and bats in close quarters. Oh, the clouds look like... Sorry? Giant... Fireflies? Hmm. So, you figure the flies eat the moss and the bats eat them? Yes, that makes sense. It does seem to be brighter in here than I remember. If my humans stopped harvesting the moss, it can grow freely for the flies to eat. Is it interesting? It's simply the way things work to me. This world is an infinitely complex web in which all things are connected. It's too small for me to notice, but we can assume there's more happening on the ground below. I don't have a deep understanding of these things, human. I simply pay attention to what happens around me. What eats the bats? Well, I do, of course. Well, I'm one of the things that eats them. But yes, you should stay close to me. Here we are. Hmm. All my bedding has rotted away, but my spring seems to be clean still. It will need some tidying up in here. That's for later, though. Oh, I will lie down just the same. Now, perhaps I should answer a few questions for you, hmm? It may clarify a few things for me. What do you want to know? My kin? Yes. I did have a group of companions I saw somewhat regularly. Let's begin with them. The first, and closest to me, was Harasura. Her wings filled the sky, gleaming with all the colors of the rainbow. Yet they beat so slowly and gently that they left only the softest breezes over the land as she flew. She soared across the world, rarely stopping. Drinking from the clouds, feasting on the light of the sun and moon. I would know she was coming by the soft trill of her song. She was always singing. It was similar to the songs of my humans. I think perhaps they based theirs on hers. Yes, she visited me often. If the need arose, she would help me in battle. Gentle as she was, her talons could rend mountains. She was beautiful, yes. Very dear to me. I miss her as well. There was also Vergaris, another close ally of mine. Uh, somewhat careless sometimes causing trouble. He would often fall asleep for so long that smaller creatures would mistake his shell for a large hill and try to live on it. That, in turn, would wake him, and he'd shake them off in a huff. <laughs> I had to sort him out a few times, but just friendly bickering, it never escalated to real violence. Scrappy little fellow, small for one of our kind. Honestly, I admired his spirit. He'd never say no to a fight, even when he should have. Yes, he tried to face my rival alone. That was the last I saw of him. I hope he survived. Who else? Hmm. Well, there was also Scorolak. I didn't see him as often. If you think I'm territorial, you should have met him. He preferred to keep his small range just south of here, scuttling through tunnels he dug in the earth and grabbing prey with his stinger. 
He and I did fight once. Not friendly bickering. <laughs> Eventually, however, we fought to a standstill. Neither one of us able to best the other. I believe we came to respect one another then. At least, I respected him. Curmudgeonly as he was, he was not malicious or cruel. He simply preferred mm, solitude. Generally speaking, we respected each other's space, but a handful of times we did find ourselves having to cooperate when someone else caused trouble. More than anything, he wanted peace, if only for his own sake. Yes, there were a few troublemakers. Torgan, Barbatos, Nagaron. Oh, you want to know about her, don't you? Hmm. Let me tell you this. I am very difficult to injure. My scales are thicker than stone. My tail can crush iron like dry twigs. My claws can and have torn through your tower hives like water. I have never known fear or pain in my heart. Except once. In her mad quest for dominance, she did things I cannot forgive, and which I will not speak of to you. That's all you need know about her. Now, for my questions. Have you heard of anything I've described? Do any of my kin sound familiar? Think, little one. We roamed and shaped this world once. Humanity was there to see it, in its infancy. There must be some memory left of us. Myths and legends. Well, that's something, I suppose. Tell me of these. Ah, oh, a giant bird which created thunder by flapping its wings. No, Harasura couldn't do that. The bird which would be reborn from fire when it died. No. She had no power over fire, either. Mm. I suppose these stories could have been inspired by her, though it sounds like they've become very distorted over time. Tell me more. A giant worm which shapes the land as it moves. Changing the course of rivers, leaving trenches in the earth grabbing prey and pulling them down without being seen. Yes, that does sound like Scorlack. Are these stories recent? Less than two hundred years old. And where do they come from, exactly? South of here. Hmm. Yes, that does seem very promising. We will go there first, then. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course, it will be a long trip for you, that's fair. Uh, very well. What supplies do you need? Hmm. I'm hesitant to return to the city with you. It will be swarming with your weapons soon, and I'll need to remove them. That is still my territory, whether I'm there or not. How long do you think it will take you to gather these supplies? If you can make it quick, then that's fine. But I want to know what's happened to us. I feel more has changed in this world than the passage of time can account for. Little one, you seem excited about this. I must ask, what do you think is in this for you? Uh, you hated your job. Your life was going nowhere. General feelings of pointlessness. Uh, 
Human, you keep talking of things I have no reference for. Ah, oh, certainly. You can tell me all about it on the way. For now, let's get you what you need.